issue number 11 of Headline Heroes, a comedy podcast where we take today's headlines and create a comic book origin story. My name is Drew Mick. I'm Nathan Haynes. And I'm Tanner Ackerman. Guys, are you? Are, I, we've talked about this before, but I'm so excited to finally talk about this. We've been holding off, but we get to talk about it now. Denny's is delivered. Well, is that... Is yeah, that what that, you're at? Denny's is delivering. <laughs> Denny's on demand. I just saw. <laughs> Don't worry, world. It's finally here. <laughs> I just saw uh, a commercial on Hulu for that. Immediately was just like, oh, that's a, that's our breakfast man, Brett Bakenstein. He probably influenced <laughs> that. Um, so yeah, Denny's is delivering twenty four seven to your door. But that is that is not what we want to talk about, right? Oh yeah. A certain Mister uh, Brandon Fraser is returning. He's back on the scene. He's back. He's back. Excited after. After we really put him on blast, well, we have put him on blast and half put him on a pedestal by looking at his <laughs> looking at his his website that hadn't been updated in years, but then also saying that any movie would be better if Brendan Fraser were in the lead. So I feel we we actually came out kind of neutral on that whole. Do you situation. think we influenced this at all? Like the very <laughs> fact that we he heard our podcast. <laughs> hey, I can be something. You just wait. So he's delivering for Denny's now, right? That's it. Yeah, it's so good to see him back on the scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I I I'm just gonna. I'm going to order Denny's constantly until he shows up at my door because I want to meet him in person. So that was kind of a brilliant marketing play. It is, really. See, now, I thought I could have sworn, you know, I think in addition to to Denny's, I thought I saw that. This is a really interesting choice. I can't wait to see him back in the role as Dr. Cox's brother-in-law. But (laughs) they're apparently just going to make just going to an entire series about him being a ghost that... Uh, follows around the doctor, Doctor Cox from Scrubs. That seems weird. That that's a tie-in, like it's a it's a direct offshoot of Scrubs, but it's like not the same tone at all. It's kind of more noir. I yeah, it's 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 weird. Like I don't know how they did it. They just took all the footage from the eight seasons of Scrubs, no ninth season, um, <laughs> and they tinted it in a noir black and white fashion, and then it just kind of superimposed him in the show behind everybody kind of reacting to it. Oh, um, so it's kind of like he was there the whole time. Exactly. He's he, it's like, guys, I'm not dead. I'm stuck in an alternate dimension. Please, somebody <laughs> help me. So, JD, you hear me, right? JD, please draw the pentagram. Summon me. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of here. He's taking pictures too. <laughs> oh, he always he always, always takes always. pictures until the day he dies. Now, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he's he's connected to a movie too. Now, right? He's doing the remake, really? the remake of Kazam. <laughs> oh shit! But he, I know now, most people play? are assuming he's playing Kazam, but no, he's playing Max, the boy that gets that <laughs> oh. box. Who's uh, now? Are they going to try and make him look like a boy, or is he just going to play it as a fully grown? Like, what's this? What's the story here? How are they? How are they addressing the sequel, Kazam Two? So it's a sequel. They're calling it Kazam Two, but it's a shot-for-shot remake of the original movie <laughs> with Brendan Fraser superimposed over Max. Okay, so it's it is Shaq returning as as Kazam, but it's it's young Shaq. The, no, they're they're going to superimpose Shaq over it too. Oh, okay. So they're, <laughs> they're superposing <laughs> Shaq over Shaq. Yeah, I mean, this is this is Hollywood now, Drew. <laughs> they could do anything. Is that the movie? Is it in Kazam that the hamburgers fall from the sky? Is that like a whole thing? Do you remember what I'm talking about? There's like a kid who wishes for hamburgers that's or something a, that's like that. That's Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Uh, no, I'm Which I believe Brendan Fraser's in as well. Hold on, now I gotta... Okay, if I search Kazam hamburger, I'm gonna see what comes up. Probably a yeah. delicious burger. Yeah, this is one where there's burgers. Oh, sorry. It rains hamburgers, tacos, and French fries. So I was wondering if they updated that scene at all to include other foods, or was it just was it literally just Brendan Fraser and Shaq superimposed over uh, existing characters? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, we should maybe suggest them. What what food would you like added to it? Well, poutine. Uh, poutine probably. That's really hot right now. It is a big thing. I wouldn't mind if they just get both got drenched in ranch dressing. Oh. Like, I don't know. It would be equal parts entertaining and erotic. So like, I'm I'm on board with that a hundo percent. You know how I do. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're Brendan Fraser, Shaquille O'Neal fanfic. Yeah, <laughs> finally. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm gonna pursue litigation for them uh, stealing my idea <laughs> for a Brendan Fraser Shaq movie. So uh, look for that coming to the Supreme Court near you. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't think you've seen it, but um, Brendan Fraser is also it, it's re- he's returning to the, the the big screen quicker than than we imagined. Um, I went and saw uh-huh. Wonder Woman last night. Oh, really? Yeah, it was very good. It was a little weird when I walked in and the the opening credits came on and um, instead they like it said Wonder Woman and then like they crossed it out they crossed out woman with Cran and replaced it with Brend Brendan. So it was Wonder Brendan. Oh. <laughs> 
And then, yeah, the whole, they got rid of Gal Gadot, and it's just Brandon Fraser. It's mm, interesting. It was a weird choice, but, you know, it somehow worked. That's really surprising. Interesting. Yeah. Now huh. I'm excited to see that film. Yeah. Now, tell me, tell me true. Mm-hmm. Don't, the spoilers are fine here. Okay. How much do he and Chris Pine kiss? Oh, it's like every scene they share together, the lips locked all the time. Okay. And then there's, I, yeah, there's I, a I weird part <laughs> where I think maybe Chris Pine couldn't even be there for um for shoots. And it's just Brandon Fraser doing that weird thing where he's like back to the camera and he's like grasping his shoulders, like pretending like he's making out with someone. And it's you're, you're led to believe it's Chris Pine, but you can tell. But he's so he Brendan Fraser is such a good like, actor that he 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 owns it. He's so good. He really is a plus. Yes. But really, he 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 is coming back to TV. He I assume will be sending us checks for helping him rise back up to the top soon enough. And I look forward to watching his television show. Should we get to the meat of the podcast? I think so. We can't just talk about Brendan as much as I would love to talk about. Well, I mean, Fraser. we could we could easily do that. Yeah. But we'll have a bonus episode <laughs> where we watch a, a Brendan Fraser movie and we'll talk about it while we watch it. So if you haven't, our this is our Brendan Fraser uh, fan cast, but sometimes we decide to do some other stuff. And today we're going to basically what we've done is over the course of the past week, uh, we've been look, looking at recent headlines and we're going to use them for origin stories for heroes and villains. Uh, and we're going to attempt to sort of connect them into their own universe that we've been crafting over the past 11 episodes. So Tanner is going to select an article at random. And this week, I think we're making a villain and we're going to see what we can make together. So Tanner, uh, what do you have for us today? So yeah, like you said, we're going to make a villain because we made uh, Long John last week. Mm. Mm. I've been, I've been trying to be a good boy and eating breakfast. I think we need to start doing that. I need to do a better job of that. We all need to work on it. We're all horrible Bacon people. Bacon will come for you if you don't. Mm-hmm. So. And um, this week's article is uh, number two for you guys. It's from Huffington Post again. And again. this one is kindergarten teacher put on leave for using Ouija board in class. Oh my God. Yes. I love this article already. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one has been on this list for a while and I've always like yeah. saw it and was just like, I want, I want to do this one, but same here. I'm glad we finally get it. So I don't know. Do you guys have any ideas? I mean, right off the bat, like connection to the paranormal or like the ghost world there we go is this our first entry into the no we have a spiritual entry in the omen shaman the sign spinning super villain from episode two or three i think number but, two mm-hmm. as well as is Bushido this our first Sobo. actual ghost connection i think this could be or some sort of yeah, demon I thing i'm just trying to imagine how kindergartners would use a ouija board like mm-hmm. the letter of the day is <laughs> b <laughs> It's just so true. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. What words start with B? <laughs> banana. Okay, there's no way they could spell banana. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't learn to read or do anything in kindergarten. I was also a really <laughs> dumb kid. <laughs> I didn't know how to read until like second grade, which apparently put me behind. Now, my mom is a kindergarten teacher, and I'll tell you what, she uses Ouija boards all the time. Okay. Like pretty much constantly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I go to her room at school, and I try and open the door, and I can't even open it because there's fucking Ouija boards like, flowing out of there. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, you have to stop. <laughs> the spirits she has summoned have prevented all the outside forces from entering. They own the classroom now. <laughs> See, that's where I thought Nate was going with it, but no, it's just the fact that she has a problem with <laughs> So too many Ouija Ouija boards. <laughs> she just loves them so goddamn much. She's a Ouija hoarder. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> so this kind of reminds me, if we're going for a super villain aspect, I feel like there's two things that we could take it. One, I actually hadn't thought of until, Drew, you said it. Like, we could have a collective villain in the form of uh, a group of kindergarten students who are either possessed or something, or but still have super, who still have kindergarten desires, or a teacher who harnesses the power of super villain, or super, uh, uh, a super villain teacher who harnesses the power of kindergarten ghosts. All right, kids, the word of the day <laughs> is legion. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Thousands of kindergarten ghosts that presumably died on that school. <laughs> what? No. What? Well, she's got to have them from somewhere. Dear kindergarten God. cemetery? Is that a Stephen King novel? It must be. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Must be. No, no. What did you guys think? I, I had imagined that it's the kindergarten teacher that gets possessed. Oh. Flesh out your first idea. So it kind of reminds me of Mech Gruff in a way. Our. Uh, robot dog yeah. from episode four or five uh who basically had one the impulse to be a hero but also the impulse 
the all impulses of a dog. Or in this case, these children have been possessed by ghosts. Maybe they're kindergarten ghosts. Maybe they're just regular ghosts. But and like while the ghosts want to do collective evil as sort of a legion, this they still are subject to the whims of kindergartners and five year olds and what they want. I don't know. Like maybe the ghosts are trying to attack a church or something. But then also there's you know, an ice cream store that's nearby. And so they get waylaid and have to go get ice cream and then hang out at the dog park for a little while because that's what the five-year-old <laughs> wants to do. Like, it's demonic voice. Ooh, puppy. <laughs> Furry puppy. What if it was the kindergarten teacher is possessed and yes. then the kindergarten teacher's like job now is this uh, teacher is trying to stay in her position as teacher, but um, is trying to create an army of kindergartners? Maybe the kindergartners aren't possessed, but this teacher is trying to prepare them. Tanner, what about you? What are you thinking? I was just thinking more she had a connection to the ghost. Or I honestly, I did not think about the kids factoring at all, other than just part of the origin story. Yeah, I mean, we could take the kids out of the equation. Well, I mean, so she was she is okay, put kindergarten on leave. teacher put on leave. Yeah. So she gets put on leave for having a little bit of fun in the class, and then she goes home and she's angry about it because she was put on leave and she was just having she was just having some fun with the kids in the class. And maybe like that's when she gets in touch with the ghost world and they the ghosts are like tempt her by with her anger and then. Like, use her, and now she's trying to get revenge yeah. on the school that let her go. I kind of like the ghosts. idea that she is possessed by whatever spirit the kindergartners will w- will so, into um, the classroom. What kind of what kind of spirit would they will in, do you think? Uh, kind of like a, the Count from Sesame Street, except a little scarier. Or a clown ghost. No, please no clowns. <laughs> that would be pretty <laughs> scary. Okay, so they, they, they bring in Stephen King's It. Let's, uh... Well, let's get Pennywise. Yep, Pennywise the yeah. clown. Yeah. Uh... Now, now, Drew. To be fair, that's just one of many forms that he takes. The other form that is popular uh, towards the end of the book is a giant spider. Yeah. So that say, doesn't I've bother that anybody. Movie. So that's here, super so... good for me specifically. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It combines one of uh, Tanner's fears and my fear of I hate mm-hmm. clowns. I don't see the problem. I don't now, see what a problem are you, with that. T- uh, Nate, what are you scared of? My own humanity <laughs> and death uh, on the horizon. Oh. Okay. I got well, fucking deep there. I don't like clowns. <laughs> and one time my parents decided to get me a clown when I was a kid. Like a clown came to my front door, brought over some balloons, and I was just mortified, petrified, terrified, terrified sitting there. <laughs> and that was uh, two years ago. <laughs> okay, so which way do we want to go with the teacher? Because we have a lot of different like ideas thrown out there. I mean, maybe it would be worth it to dig in a little bit more about Drew's, Drew's thought on like what kind of, I mean, no matter what, what kind of spirits kindergartners would end up getting in contact I was with. also thinking that maybe the fact that this teacher was put on leave for using the Ouija board is just a cover. And maybe uh, the teacher is actually put on leave because some, something's not right and they wanted to get her out of there. So she's, so because she's possessed. Yeah, maybe. I see. Hmm. Maybe she just keeps using a Ouija board trying to summon more demons. She's still using? <laughs> Hitt- hitting up that, puffing on that, that Ouija. I like the idea of her actually getting put on leave and wanting revenge and like starting to haunt the school. Like a kid's walking by a drinking fountain and it turns on by itself all of a sudden. Just small stuff like that starts happening. <laughs> just blood is coming out or it looks like blood, but, but it's <laughs> actually uh, what, Hawaiian punch. <laughs> I just love horror movies. So Wine. <laughs> I don't think can, it should be can only haunt, but with a kindergarten theme. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the the you know that uh, wooden clock that's used to like teach time. Mm-hmm. Like a a student looks over and it's just turning on itself by itself. The eyes are moving on it or something. It's supposed to be really creepy, but it's actually kind of adorable. But still creepy. A little creepy. So can her powers extend to outside of the school as well? Like, what does it mean to have a ghost powers over only kindergarten stuff? Like, can she go out into the world and have power over that? Because if we're gonna make her a super villain, I think she's gotta she's gotta have more power than just in one specific spot. Maybe she can go out into the world, but primarily she wants maybe whatever spirit is um, summoned is like a malevolent kindergartner. I don't know. That could be. So then that's why like all her stuff is that yeah. is related to kindergarten stuff. What do kids what do kids like? Kids love watching TV. What's a hot cartoon right now? Uh, Barney. Paw Patrol. Well, see now here's the thing. I don't uh, since we're I'm 26 years old, I honestly don't know if you're telling me the truth or I'm not. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. <laughs> it is. It's my niece watches it. Aw. It's cute. 
Yeah. What it could be is that the spirit could be um, a teacher that died at the school, and somehow it was children's fault. So they're Ooh. targeting kids in their dreams. And so when the kids fall asleep, this man that was burned to death by the parents is um, coming up with clever ways to kill them in their dreams. And he uses fun punchlines, like he turns into a TV and he smashes someone in the TV and he says, now you're playing with power. I wish, oh man, that's that's a great horror movie idea. Somebody should have come up with a series of movies that are like sort of similar to that. Brendan, please. Brendan, yeah, Brendan. <laughs> Brendan, I mean, please. That's what he's doing. But before I started describing Nightmare on Elm Street, I mean the part before that, uh, the spirit is a teacher that got killed. Yeah, I do like that. That'd be good because then it's kind of we could keep the kindergarten element in there. How does that take me through it again? How this ties into like how specifically this ties into our kin- our our headline here? So the the kindergarten teacher is put on leave for using a Ouija board in class. Is that when the dead? So I, my my concern is that the the dead teacher is now the villain. And, and I guess we could go. Well, that the direction. dead the dead teacher is possessing this new kindergarten teacher. Oh, okay. It's summoned on the school grounds where where the the original teacher died. Or and, yeah. So the teacher could be a descendant of the person that was killed, and they were purposely trying to summon them. So maybe not possessed by them necessarily, but now they're like working together, and somehow the ghost can like give her powers, so that way she doesn't have to actually be possessed, and like she still has her own free will. And is willingly doing these things. But has the ghostly powers. Yes. Because it was her like great, great grandma or grandfather. That was <laughs> part of the ritual to summon needs to be kindergartners. You need a child's laughter or some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my mom says anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Nate. What do you think? I'm trying to think of like where we, where we, we, where we're trying, where we're going to try and end up. What is, what is going to be this person's overarching plan, and seeing if that can help inform. Like they're sort, of, cause I don't know, they're sort of interconnected. So I'm trying to think like, okay, if this is our, if our, if our supervillain is a kindergarten teacher who has now been possessed by her ancestor and has ghostly powers, what what does that person want to accomplish? Yeah, what's their what, is their, what is going to be their goal? Revenge. So they start going for the descendants of all the people that were the cause of their death. So who's in okay, charge here? Die. Is it the ghost or is the is it the the vessel? They're working together is how I would look Why? at it. Sorry, I watch too many horror movies, so I just keep like going that way with it. <laughs> I, I think... I think it would, I don't know, my, my opinion is I think it would be good for us to make sure, or to try and incorporate some of the kindergarten aspect into this character, and I'm worried that having it possessed by an ancestor removes the need for the kindergarten aspect entirely. I think after he's summoned. it might be more interesting if it was, like, the original teacher, the vessel, is a, uh, the unfortunate victim here, and every so often whatever is possessing uh, her is taking charge, trying to get revenge. Both of them are kindergarten teacher. And because there's two two kindergarten teachers in this vessel now, you got to completely rewrite that itinerary, you know? Okay. Then I think we should go back to Nate's first idea where the kids are a group being used. So, like, they want to go mess up that church, but they want ice cream first. The teacher is trying to lead these children. Yes. And it's like uh, being an actual kindergarten teacher where you have to basically corral kids constantly. I just I just don't I opened up the article and the, the subtext is the complaining parent says her son is having nightmares. So it's kind of that kind of plays in the kids are being affected by this. Mm-hmm. The other I mean, we could also do some like that reminds me of what you guys were talking about earlier to a degree. Like we could if you want to do sort of a possession by old kindergarten teacher into new kindergarten teacher, we could perhaps make up some sort of lore about the Ouija board where it's like, well, wherever they get summoned is like determines how they can channel their powers. And so if that happens in a kindergarten classroom, then suddenly this ghost can go and do whatever the fuck it wants There's- with his ghost powers. But all its ghost powers are based on whatever was in the area when it was summoned. So we're talking blocks. We're talking action figures. We're talking <laughs> look over you know, and like the popsicle sticks and glue are starting to assemble and to kill. Exactly. <laughs> In crayons, you go in and somebody's written "You're next" in crayon on your mirror. Like, but it's, it's the S is like uh, the K is backwards. Like, wait, hold wait, on. there's a K I, in your next. Fuck! I was gonna <laughs> die. You beat me to it. I was just about to say, wait, there's no the uh, the E is backwards. And there. the K T next. Yeah, yeah, next <laughs> with an S. Yeah, kindergarteners don't know how to spell anything. Okay, so clearly yes. I just learned how to spell next 15 seconds ago. <laughs> And I'm 26. 
Your mom needs to like sit you down for a Ouija lesson sometime, I think. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, all right. So should we just cover what we've got? L- yeah, let's 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 just make a let's just make a choice and try and go yes. with it. Did we decide ghost or spirit? was formerly a kindergarten teacher um i almost think it would you know now that it, okay depending on where we go powers wise if we were to do that their powers are kindergarten classroom based i almost think it would be funnier if they were not a kindergarten teacher because it would be so frustrating so the, the kindergarten but, aspect comes more from like you said where where this ghost was summoned mm-hmm. like the energy mm-hmm. of the classroom kind of mm-hmm. uh, like this teacher did it by accident she thought it was going to be a fun thing yes but then oops she did get possessed by a ghost <laughs> unfortunately yes. you know yes. i hate it when that happens this this is good the kindergarten teacher miss bradbury sure mm-hmm. uh, used the ouija board in her class to try and teach alpha the alphabet to the kindergartners or something like that and in the process summons some malevolent spirit which um possesses this uh, kindergarten teacher turning into an un- her into an unfortunate like victim here mm-hmm. is it what's the relationship between the ghost and the teacher is um the kindergarten teacher trying to fight against this is uh, the teacher corrupted because of this <laughs> like the the ghost flavor um flavors the the kindergarten teacher's personality my gut says that in a in a real comic book uh she would be fighting back and it would be a really like aspect of her story where she's trying to fight against this ghost that's overtaken her but i also think that's sort of depressing for the whole comedy aspect of the podcast that we're going to where this person is trapped in their own body mm-hmm. so i don't I know think maybe t- whatever maybe ever so often she's able to overpower it a little bit but i like the well, idea well, okay. of fighting against it or if, if she's a villain what if she really digs the power that comes that is afforded to her by having this she ghost? starts like, to fight against it but then as as time goes on she's just like addicted to the power it's equal I, I, it's like equal parts stockholm syndrome and like Ooh. empowerment for this person where she's like first she's stuck and she sort of like resigns to it but then she's like wait i'm more powerful than i ever was before like this is actually great i love this these kids have puked on me too many times <laughs> now it now it is i <laughs> <laughs> she starts puking on him yeah and turning her head completely around <laughs> Okay, that's good. So she gets. So what does she want to do? Corrupted. What's yeah? What's her motivation? So she was fired. Is that part of? Does that color well, her just motivation? Put on or leave. Is this... Yeah, she's not fired. Well, when she starts making glue and popsicle stick, you know, aberrations and horrors <laughs> in the classroom, then maybe it's time for your um, yearly review. Um, the kids have really connected with you. Like it's weird how much they've connected with you. Um, do have to bring up the popsicle stick pentagrams. Mm-hmm. What purpose do they serve? <laughs> and this is uh, so. This is a pipe cleaner Cthulhu here that <laughs> does appear to be actively moving and attempting to eat my hand. So <laughs> you encourage uh, not loving that. Uh, you encourage the kids to you know Waldo and Carmen San Diego. Also the dark. The dark one. Who is this dark one? Also, I where, don't think Carmen the San Diego is, is used in schools anymore at all. Well, no, well, no one can find her. So, like, how the hell am I supposed to use her <laughs> She's in class? Gone. You know? She's just disappeared. I, I had this striking vision of like this woman sitting in the in the, like an office getting her review. And, and she sort of has like a uh, Medusa thing going on on her hair, like flowing out behind her actively. But instead of snakes, it's just like pipe cleaners and stuff, <laughs> just like energy radiating off of her. That's a great idea. <laughs> just, okay. So what um, do? So is the motivation from coming from her, or is it from the spirit that possessed her? I think it's the spirit, and then eventually she gets on board, and they become as one. So what is we the spirit's goal? We are it, that kind of gives us free will to pick whatever. If it's the spirit's motivation, yeah, almost too many options. It could be like she has impacted the personality, and she's still very much a kindergarten teacher. It's just kind of like a melding of their personalities. So the kindergarten teacher can still have that aspect of teaching, I suppose. Uh, what if it was she was possessed by the spirit? Oh, okay. Now this might maybe this is too dark. I don't know. What if she was possessed by the spirit of a child that died? Maybe the child was killed by some sort of like accident that happened because an adult made a mistake. Like it doesn't have to be malicious, but that child blames all adults for what happened to him or her. So like the the child is trying to get revenge on other adults and she just happens that like the only person she could end up possessing was 
uh, this teacher, but otherwise she's trying to empower all the kindergarten students to help her take down like schools and adults all weekends, all the time, summer forever. So it's like it's like <laughs> recess, but like real dark. Yeah, re- a dark recess. Yeah, I don't know, I, that that is the, an idea. The, the idea of a a, a um, ghost child is a little dark but i actually like the idea that that's what flavors the 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 childishness is that it is in fact Mm. a child yeah that's why i tried to make it not like and then the child was abused to death it was just like somebody made it like i don't know we can get more specific about it but somebody made a mistake child died very sad but the child's ghost has come back to seek revenge so they're gonna like target schools and like things that they think adults like, so like yeah. doctors' offices or <laughs> bowling alleys or things that kids find not fun. They're gonna take down the IRS because, like, <laughs> they know that p- t- adults like to do taxes. I mean, they don't, but that's what a kid would think. Or I don't know, maybe a kid. So yeah, this is from a kid's perspective. What do they think adults like, and try to take those things down? That could be fun. Sm- all the smooth jazz clubs in the country gone. Or, well, he's going to try and make it that way. <laughs> Nick, do you hit up a lot of smooth jazz clubs? Well, that, it's not about what not, I not do. Enough. It's about what kids think I do. Well, asking for friends, but that sounds tight as shit. I would love. I mean, my friend <laughs> yeah, would I'd love to sound there. pretty fun. I would definitely do that. I pull a Duke Silver now and again, mm. you know, break out the saxophone, get on up there. Oh, so it's you. Oh, okay. This is a whole side of you. Oh, I shit. Delete all didn't this. know. <laughs> His secret. So, uh, but, so do we want to have it? be the student the, the child be a little girl does it does it matter i don't think that matters too much but we can just do girl for the sake of keeping it all feminine sure sure i mean yeah either way it's a child who is attempting to understand how to take down adults without understanding exactly what it is adults <laughs> like yeah is is the teacher and, having any say in this at all just being like ah we're gonna attack the bank and the teacher's just like well okay yeah actually we could use the money sure <laughs> i don't know that's that is, like i mean you could maybe the child just doesn't listen to her because she's an adult like she is merely a means to an end she doesn't like the fact that she has okay. to work with an adult to get her needs but i like the idea that the teacher would also be present enough to like just make commentary on whatever the child is doing yeah i'm like, picturing oh, like deadpool jazz club huh well nobody nobody really goes to though okay <laughs> fine i guess we're gonna take down the jazz club <laughs> I picture like two different bubbles, like one's the the ghost thing and the other one's the teacher. We're going to go take down daddy's special place. And it's actually a bar. (laughs) (laughs) What else would kids think that adults find fun? Going for walks, you know, (laughs) going for walks. Yeah. Sleeping. (laughs) Oh, watching the news. Oh, yeah. Take down big news first. Yeah, like reading mm-hmm. the newspaper, those type of boring things. I think we have a pretty solid motivation. But so can we nail down what now that we sort of have an idea what of what the villain is, what are her powers? Um like what are the actual powers that she has? Uh should we just start with the basics? Like Yeah. Can she get um, hurt? Can she turn um transparent, ethereal or whatever that is? Ethereal. ethereal. Um so I guess first we have to decide, are they permanently stuck together? I think so. It, for the purposes of our discussion. I think for like, right so now they, they are stuck together. Maybe in the future they figure out a way to get mm-hmm. separate, but that's not for a ways down the road. I almost think that as far as healing goes, they should be bound by the limits of a human body. But like I think the ghost could help make her a little bit stronger physically sure. just a little like surprisingly um, so what about ghost powers like are we gonna do stuff with like pipe cleaners and popsicle sticks and like glue and glue sticks and all that kind of stuff as like the basis of their powers because that's what the kid maybe the kid was really artistic and that's what mm-hmm. typical that's what she loved typical haunting stuff where like uh she can make shit move over there or just anything mm. that's just a little eerie yeah door slamming but, and the but she only has the off. force of a five-year-old <laughs> yeah so she can pick up that one book and throw it like six feet <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea of the like popsicle sticks and glue sticks and those type of things because i i picture at one point like using a glue stick to glue a person down so they could can't come after her or something like that a kid is throwing a tantrum and <laughs> just glues the kid to the crowd <laughs> No more or onto the wall or something. <laughs> maybe maybe the the kid really liked Blue's Clues and starts leaving clues around, except instead of a blue paw, paw print, it's just a bloody handprint. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but the bloody handprint is red crayon. I'm trying to just think of what can, other... Can like, this teacher walk through walls? 
Hover? I I don't think I'd walk through walls, but hover, I would say. Yeah. But uh, maybe, maybe she doesn't a... try to do that a lot because that would blow her cover. Yeah. Can she influence the kindergartners to help her? Is a, is a, is a kindergarten army going to roll up on this jazz club and just take it down? Yes, but maybe it takes her some time to, ap- the, to do um, corruption at all. It's it's a slow corruption. Mm-hmm. That's why she's got to get her job. That's back. why she's got to stay as a kindergarten teacher. Yeah, yeah. To spend time with the kids. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> she can like cut people, but only enough as she can only cut people with the strength of those the safety scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Is she restricted to only possessing kids because maybe? Yeah, specifically kindergartners. So that's why she has to stay in the position because each year it, the in... kids go to first grade. So oh, her job is to corrupt them before they move on. Oh, boy, that's pretty dangerous. Yeah, so then eventually, it, like 12 persists. years down the road, she's got like everyone, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and maybe she can only do kindergartners because they, they have weaker minds than adults. or They're more susceptible to influence. Mm-hmm. So they're um, formative years. Yeah. Did we want to try and tackle name? Well, let's get let's let's dig into that bad boy. Wait, hold on. We just talked about power, so should we talk about weaknesses while we're right there? Yeah. So holy water, um, <laughs> your typical holy water. Also, your standard juice. ghost fair. You spill juice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, you, if you pour a ring of grape juice around her, she cannot escape from it. <laughs> you have to make Don't a break. pentagram out of graham crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess religious stuff. There's got to be something funny though. We got. Well, there's got to be like a, it, a cross would like burn her, but you have to make it out of like macaroni art. <laughs> <laughs> macaroni art. So what if we did instead of holy water, you had to get a priest to bless apple juice? Okay. Like it sort of combine the the standard horror trope with the juice angle that you came up with. So, so yeah, no. just a, a lot of that, like the typical stuff you need in horror movies, but it has to be mm-hmm. somehow a kindergarten twist on it. What what else is a common exorcism thing or ghost weakness? So we got the whole typically reading from the Dude, Bible. I'll just Google ghost weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's Reading one of those kids on pop. illustrated Bibles. Yeah, like, don't show her uh, Veggie Tales. Oh shit, no. <laughs> yeah, instead of reading a Bible, yes, you have to that's play a good an one. episode of Veggie Tales. <laughs> and here we go, Rad Shack and Benny. Um, so Ghost is weak um against Dark type. Oh yeah, yeah. So we just need to get we gotta get some Dark type Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, like a Tyranitar or an Umbreon, a Murkrow, I believe. Yeah, Murkrow that's is. A... Okay, so I think we got some good weaknesses there. Typical exorcism stuff, except with kindergarten twist uh so yeah like you said should we should we try names once yeah oh boy like, this one's gonna be tough yet we could do like whatever her miss i said miss bradbury mm-hmm. i think at one point uh, i'm not sure if she's gonna have an alter ego but we could name the spirit that's possessing her and maybe the kid the the kindergarten like really kindergartner really likes the idea of like naming himself and or herself yeah she she wants to have a persona it's yeah it's very her name is irrelevant yeah she just wants a persona do we want to do miss um, bradbury as like or should we do something spooky for her name like her yeah. like real life name yeah and then we could name the spirit it could be miss skellington <laughs> <laughs> no i think bradbury is fine Bones, i don't think we need to make her name that way and then oh her last uh, name could be ghost yeah, right. miss ghost the spirit of vengeance. What are some famous ghosts? Casper. Casper. <laughs> and then those ghosts from Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, I guess they were like, they're, I guess they weren't ghosts, skeletons. really. Should the name be something like this, the phantom teacher or ghost teacher or something like that? Maybe what it is is like the teacher gets a reputation from the students and they start calling her something. And like the ghost kindergartner is just like, yes, and embraces that. Kinder haunter. There's something there rad phantom well that's another good point is how long ago did this kid die yeah. gnarly because if he's from gnarly <laughs> phantom the gnarly phantom what was this kid raised on rocket power or something could be could we do something with poltergeist like kindergeist kindergeist, kindergeist? Oh. yeah <laughs> yes i think it was nate and i both said it yeah kindergeist kindergeist <laughs> I, that that no, yeah, it was kindergarten. It off. Like it, it doesn't make sense in the the if we if we're looking at it to be like the kid named themselves kindergeist, but maybe the it could be a name that they the kindergarten ghost acquired. Uh, when did Poltergeist come out? In the eighties, oh. nineteen eighty two. 
Yeah, okay, so maybe the kid died in the eighties. Yeah, saw Poltergeist, terrified him, but also like when he came back as a sorry when she came back as a ghost, she was like, "That is some spooky shit, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be like that." Yeah, yeah. and it makes sense because they don't really know what Poltergeist means necessarily. So they think if they just put Kinder in front of it, it's still the same thing. Okay, I, I can I, I'm I can dig on that. Yeah. Does the does the child need a name or is it unimportant in this particular case? Yeah, it's uh, Brandon Fraser. <laughs> So Brandon Fraser is going to be back in a new TV show. Did you guys hear about Kindergeist. that? Kindergeist. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Kindergeist. Okay, this might be super dumb. But so in 30 Rock, there's a character named uh, Don Geis. Oh, yeah. Uh, could the teacher's name or the child's name be Kim Geis? Because it's almost like Kindergeist. Is that the teacher or the kid? The kid. Either. I don't care. I think the kid. Kim Geist becomes Kindergeist. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it also, everyone should watch 30 like Rock. It's a good show. Picked poltergeist as her inspiration well, that and she just saw it before she died yeah well both why not yeah. she, i'm assuming she doesn't have a costume because she is just a ghost she just wears a typical you know teacher outfit but then very professional maybe if uh the ghost like really takes form it transforms her she's kind of glowing and her clothing looks a little tattered and spooky and she has uh pipe cleaners floating around her hair <laughs> Yeah, or popsicle sticks, glue sticks, just like all around her. <laughs> yeah, someone flips the spook switch. Mm-hmm. We've already got motivation, and what are they doing? Basically, just trying to create an army of kindergartners. What is a what does her comic book cover look like? Because I read a lot of Archie Afterlife, it should be like an orange tint to it, almost, which makes it feel like more Halloween and horror. So I I want that that tint to it, and. It, it's just her with the kindergartners and she has the Ouija board and they're doing it right then. Mm, so you want an action shot of them, like action, quote unquote, of them actually summoning Kim Geist for the first yeah. time. For, like, and maybe in the background time. you can see like this ghost appearing. So you can see like the door to the classroom in the background and there's just like a silhouette of someone in the window of the door. I can dig on that. And then I don't have anything clever for the kindergeist at the top. It's it's just in written in crayon, fonts. obviously. <laughs> Spooky, spooky crayon. It's made out of popsicle sticks. <laughs> it's like it's like blood. It's like blood letters that are sort of dripping, but like you can tell that it's kind of actually crayon. The K is <laughs> like it's backwards. Melted crayon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Of course. Just like in your next. <laughs> <laughs> and do we have her first defeat? Like, how do they stop her the first time she's doing something? Are they even aware of her? Nap time. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> She gets up to the gates of a jazz club and they're banging on the doors, but then all the kids are just like, I'm so tired. And then they just lay down and nap and she's defeated by her own army. Yes. Okay. Maybe there's one class that actually like openly resists her. Yeah. It could be a kid who like watched, watches way too many horror movies for a kindergartner, <laughs> a young Tanner Ackerman. Yep. <laughs> it's like, this is, this shit is whack. Is no one else <laughs> looking at this? No one like, else clearly seen her she is spin, possessed. Or her head spin completely around. No, one? So it's like a kindergartner that's like very aware and like much more intelligent. Just like how how is no one else freaked out by this? <laughs> the the chalk is literally floating and writing. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. So young young Tanner Ackerman defeats her. <laughs> is that canon? <laughs> we could. That's how we insert you into this. Yeah, it's a little cameo slowly, for you. <laughs> slowly, we will put each of our ourselves in into this u- universe. It's my Stan Lee moment. Yeah. <laughs> I can dig on that. Did we want to talk about connections to current Pantheon? Uh, one oh, man is what what do adults like? Coffee. Yeah, but... <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, bring it back to coffee. So they're trying to destroy a coffee shop. I was thinking, is there any hero or character we've created that? could be a possible graduate of uh, Miss Bradbury. Okay, so you're trying to set this in the past. Lord. Maybe a little. Maybe this has been going on for a while. I mean, the sign man, if he, maybe that helped Omen Shaman be like more in touch with the spiritual side of the universe by having contact with his ghost for so many years. So Omen mm-hmm. Shaman is a, a, a Bradbury grad? A Brad God, grad? A potential. Bradbury? A Gradbury. Sure. I can see that. And then that, that, that left him weak and was able to... It, it, they actually in this article they say that the the kids start having nightmares didn't we say that he kind of has like a vision or something a nightmares he gets hit in the head by a sign yeah and he has a vision of billing paul <laughs> yep so that could be why he was more susceptible so uh i mean i don't know are there any other ones that you guys I think, uh think honestly of? the omen shaman is the 
one that makes the most sense. I wasn't thinking at first, but once you gave your reason, that made a lot of sense. Okay. That's cool. That's a great connection. I like that it's also not like I like that it's more of a subtle connection too, and that like it's not this person is always against this person, or like they're these two people are directly related, or it's sort of more like it helps build the universe in a in a in a smaller way. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And we're fleshing out characters from April. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything else we want to say about that? Or is he still in touch with his, his kindergarten teacher? Does she have a uh, sway over him? Like he's evil in his own way. But if he were to come across Miss Bradbury, she she kind of can control him a little bit. Mm. I think she can influence him. Yeah, that would make for an interesting crossover. But maybe he could look for to his patron no. saint, Bill Engvall, to like, <laughs> help guide him. Bill Engvall, <laughs> please. That's what how he breaks the possession. Or not possession, being controlled by her. Did we want to say that him? any hero... Like, we said it was uh, little baby Tanner Ackerman, but did we want to say that it was one of our heroes that resisted her? Could have it be one of the watchdogs if you wanted. Could. I mean, that's, oh, that's true. There's others with own, uh, other options, too. That's, well, that, that was honestly the first thing I thought She was probably too of. old. <laughs> Unless <laughs> she never ages. a long time. Yeah, no, she never ages. <laughs> and no one notices it, except for that one kid who's like, how is no one noticing this? This teacher literally had my grandmother. <laughs> Probably not that. I like the idea that she doesn't age, but I don't think she's been around. Maybe she's approaching a time, a tenure where like it is starting to get questionable, but this town is an idiot. Oh, and then it makes sense with the uh, Omen Shaman. Isn't doesn't he exist in a town that's just full of idiots? Yeah, no, that works perfectly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Perfect good call. Perfect. connection. Well done, Nate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did do a pretty good... No, don't thank me. Thank Brendan. I was going to say, we got to thank Bill Engvall and Brendan Fraser. Our patron saints. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Did you guys know that Bill Engvall has a podcast he does? Oh, yeah. Should Maybe he'll have us on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How long till we get till we get on that podcast? My two cents with Bill Engvall. You're welcome, Bill. Oh, good. One of his guests was Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> well, I mean, you kind of got to, right? Oh, Jeff Dunham was on there, too. Cool. Oh my god. I hate Jeff. Did he bring the puppets? I hope oh, so. He's the worst. Larry the cable guy was on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, there and there's Ron White. Let's complete it out. Yeah, I mean well, I mean, come on, you gotta. What right? if the show was just them telling their trademark stories over and over again? Like Ron White only goes on and does they call me tater salad. It's the only story he's Walt got. is crying. Please let me st- <laughs> let me go, Bill. Please let me stop this hell. He's like, No, tell me the story <laughs> again, you guys, Ron. You guys maybe don't know this, but a long time ago back when I was in junior high Bill Engvall did in fact perform in my hometown and I did actually go see that mm-hmm. oh, yeah really? I've seen him live no big Tanner, deal. do you remember that I guess you grew up with me yeah I remember that did you go no I couldn't I don't remember why probably because you were the smart kindergartner and you realize oh he actually sucks <laughs> he's okay like I said I was an idiot kid <laughs> I was just dumb as hell I was dumb Tanner you're so smart <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's all right of the, of the the of the blue county tour guys i mean he's he's among the better but that's among the four of them <laughs> okay that's enough okay, of that okay so let's rank the length no okay. we're going to rank the blue collar comedy All right. tour yep. real so quick. it goes Larry the cable guy <laughs> number Bill 1 Ball, ron white jeff foxworthy that's an interesting choice that you put Larry the Cable Guy at the You're top. Done. Have you had his chips? Sorry, he has some, sorry I didn't um have you, have what, you, okay have you had his chips didn't... I didn't know that that was a thing, but what is what does his chips have to do with his his comedy merit? Oh True, it has God, everything to do with his comedy merit. Han, what are you talking about? If you've about? done the research, maybe I would listen. I still, I think I've talked to Nate about this before, but I, my theory is that Larry the Cable Guy is actually Guy Fieri, <laughs> <laughs> and they've never been seen together at the same time. Well, he's always wearing a hat. <laughs> yeah, so if you take that hat off, then like, boom, blonde tips. Oh my god, you just cracked it all open. Oh, Tanner, why did you tell me about these stupid <laughs> chips? There's tater salad chips. I was just looking <laughs> yeah. at those. That's what made me so angry. Oh man, he's got one called Jalapeno Popper. <laughs> I can't believe you guys didn't know about these. I didn't know that. God, and you know, if I if I'm like looking at this this Google search from a distance, I honestly think that's Guy Fieri, Larry the Cable Guy Fieri. <laughs> should we should <laughs> right, we wrap right. this up? Let's dial it back. Yeah, I think we should. All right, so so are we good with everything we have? I think so. Yeah, I, I like I like our creation. It took us a little bit to get. Like, we had to talk about like degrees of possession, <laughs> but finally we got. And whether there. or not we were being too depressing, we yeah. found our way. All right, so I guess I'll just wrap it up then. So this has been issue number eleven of Headline Heroes, featuring our new super villain, 
Kindergeist, which is such a cool name. <laughs> As always, we wanted to take the time to thank Brett Jacobson for the art that he created for our show. Um, also, Carl Sorensen for the music he created for our podcast. Carl does have his website, carljsorensen.com. Again, if we, uh, I, I preach this every week, but it would be so cool if, if you guys come across any articles that you would love to see us discuss uh, we would love to get those. It's very tiring for us week after week to go through the sludge of the internet and try and find these things. It's almost depressing. If you come across anything that you want us to use, go ahead and email it to us at headlineheroescast at gmail.com. Or you could definitely tweet it at us at headline underscore heroes. Um, if you're listening to us and you haven't um, subscribed to us, it'd be great if you could give us that. Um, That'd be great. Helps our numbers. Go ahead and if you haven't done it already, leave us a review, a rating and a review. Whatever you feel is fair for us. Uh, we want to be improving. So if you've got some criticism, yeah, let us know. And certainly certainly <laughs> come at us at uh, the email as well if you have any yeah. thoughts or ideas about the like we, we, we're also reachable by that. Not all communication has to occur via iTunes review. Yeah. And if you, yeah, we also have a Facebook page that um, we would love to see some chatter going on there. <laughs> can I, can I give him a, sh- a shout out, Tanner? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Tanner's brother, Tyler, <laughs> is like the only guy on our Facebook group and like actually posting on there. And we really appreciate it, Tyler. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> can't stress enough how much he'll never be a producer. Though. Can't, cannot stress enough. No producer, no producer credit cred. for Tyler. But uh, thank you, Tyler. We really appreciate that. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for joining us for this issue, and we hope you'll pick up the next issue of Headline Heroes.